Our first speaker for today's session is Mr. Vivek Singh. Mr. Vivek Singh is a practicing IT lawyer and a patent agent with 15 plus years of experience in the IT field. Our next speaker for the day is Mr. Akash Thudwa, Associate Manager, IP Prosecution at Sagacious IP. Mr. Akash is a trademark attorney with seven plus years of experience in the trademark and design filing, prosecution, and opposition proceedings. He is also well versed with the copyrights and its various aspects. Now, I would like to discuss the key takes away the key takeaway of the today's webinar. We will start with the exam overview. We will discuss the preparation strategies along with the detailed background of the exam format. We will also discuss the important dates and deadlines for registration of the exam. This will be followed by some practical insights, including tips from successful candidates and industry experts. We will discuss some common pitfalls and how to avoid them during preparation for the exam. All of this will be coupled with the question and answer session, wherein we will clear all your doubts and queries related to the exam. I would like to request Mr. Vivek Singh to take the session forward. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Navneet. Next one and a half hours, what I am going to convey to you or what I am going to share with you. So I am going to share with you four important points. And these points are, let me share my screen. Hope my screen is visible. Right. So I'm going to cover four important aspects. The first and very important aspect is that you should know why to clear these exams, the patent agent exam and the trademark agent exam, the opportunities available after clearing these exams and overall in the IP industry. So I'm going to decode that, that why you should clear these exams. That's point number one. Point number two is how to clear. How to clear part is very simple, wherein I will be talking to you about the syllabus, about, about the structure of these exams and how to clear these exams with, with, with the regular practice and with self-study and also with, with doing some courses. The third point which I'll be talking about is about Academy of Patents. And immediately after that, today we are going to meet many experts. So we are going to meet around 10 people. These 10 people are primarily who have cleared the exam, the previous uh, 2023, 2022, 2020 exams. And we have some of the toppers also. So today we'll be meeting the AIR rank one holder for the trademark agent exam 2024 that happened in January this year. Plus we will be meeting a lot of IP practitioners. So they, uh, they will be going to take the uh, sessions for Academy of Patents. So I will let them introduce themselves and so that you can also know them and you can also take their uh, opinion on how to prepare uh, these for these exams. So these are the five points we are going to cover in next one and a half hours. And then the last point will be the bonus opportunity. So towards the end of the session, I am going to share something very exciting with all of you, wherein what we will be offering for the successful candidates for this year who all will clear the exam the patent agent exam or the trademark agent exam so we are going to announce some of the bonus offers for them so that i'll be sharing towards end of the session and then the session will be open for q and a so i request everyone to please be on your laptops don't use your mobile phones for next one and a half hours because I am going to decode the my, my 15 years of journey in the IP industry. So I, I started my journey in the IP industry from search and now I am handling everything in my current profile wherein I am handling a team of IP attorneys. 
uh, who are doing the patents, who are doing the trademarks, who are doing the design, who are doing copyright, prosecution, litigation, search, everything. So I will share that part also with you. So please be with me, please be attentive and please do the active listening. So there is a difference between listening and active listening. Active listening is wherein you will be thinking about what I am saying. You will be answering the questions I will be uh, raising in between. So please do the active listening. And my commitment to you is that in next one and a half hour, you will understand the entire IP industry, the opportunities available, how you can upgrade yourself in the IP industry and beyond IP industry. So I request everyone to please be with me for next one and a half hours. Be attentive. Right. So let me now stop sharing my screen. So now let me move directly into the first point wherein I'll be talking about why to clear these exams. And to understand why, we need to understand what are the job opportunities available in the IP domain? What is the salary structure of the people? And what is the qualification that is required to, to enter in uh, this domain? Again, I have to share my screen. Right. We have already covered this slide. To understand why, just look at this slide wherein I have captured six or seven news items which are related to patents wherein our prime minister or other ministers have given statements related to patents related to IP. So just look at these news items for a few seconds so that you will be able to visualize the entire spectrum of IP and what are the opportunities available and why this sector is booming. Right. So if the prime minister of the country is talking about patents, is talking about IP rights every other day, it means the government of India is focusing a lot on this sector, intellectual property. Why? Just look at this news at the center, wherein the data which is, which is mentioned is that India issued 1 lakh patents in 2024. However, 10 years back in 2014, this number was less than 6,000. Actually, this number was 5,000. So it's almost 25 times jump in just 10 years. 5,000 or maybe 6,000 patents in a year to 1 lakh patents in a year in 2024. What does this number is indicating? If any sector or if a number has grown 25 times in just 10 years is more than enough to understand that this sector is booming. My idea of sharing this slide is this one that you need to understand that this sector has a lot of opportunity because the, the GDP of India is growing. You, you are aware about the foreign investment or the FDI is increasing day by day in India. What is going to happen once a company is investing in any country? First of all, their focus will be to protect their most valuable assets. So by the way, these days, the most valuable assets are not the property. These are intellectual property. So companies are focusing a lot in protecting their IP rights in India. And that's why the IP sector is booming. And who all will be protecting these IP rights? These will be done by patent agents, Trademark agents, patent uh, attorneys, trademark attorneys, right? So idea behind this slide is to give you that perception that why there is a great opportunity in being a patent agent or a trademark agent. Let's move ahead. 
before before i will move on to the next part it's important so we we did the survey we got the results that in this uh, session a lot of people are from technical background with science background many are from the pharma background many are from the engineering background many are from the law background with technical background and without technical background so there is a question that i should appear in the patent agent exam or in the trademark agent exam or both you should appear in both or not i will capture that in the next slide but let's first understand that which exam is relevant for you one by one let's look at if you are a science graduate with bsc msc bca mca or similar qualification so you can appear in the patent agent exam as well as in the trademark agent exam you should appear in one or two that's a separate issue i'll be talking about that as well but you are eligible to appear in both the exams right if you are like btech qualified or mtech qualified you can also appear in both the exams pae as well as ta if you are a pharmacy graduate post graduate again you are eligible to appear in the both the exams you are llb with technical background btech llb bsc llb you can appear in both both exams are relevant for you if you are a llb with non technical background let's say ba llb bcom llb you can't appear in the patent agent exam that is not relevant for you you are not qualified to appear in the patent agent exam but you can appear in the trademark agent exam it means to say lawyers who are from the non ip background and they don't have the technical background they can appear in the trademark agent exam what the benefit they will get they will add another expertise area of trademark practice in their service offerings in their service portfolio that is the benefit if you are a graduate or post graduate with arts background again you cannot appear in the patent agent exam you can appear in the trademark agent exam similarly if you are from the commerce background you cannot appear in the patent agent exam you can appear in the trademark agent exam i hope this slide is enough to give you the idea that which exam you should appear in right now the next question may be if i am eligible to appear in both pae as well as ta so should i appear in one or should i appear in both so these are two separate exams don't get confused that it's a one single exam these are two separate exams you have to apply uh, like uh, for for you have to fill two application forms you have to pay two fee uh, for for like one uh, fee for ta and the other for ta but my recommendation will be you appear in one only at a time because preparing for both will be very difficult it's a comprehensive uh, like exercise you have to read a lot you have to memorize a lot of sections so my suggestion is to appear in one exam this year and once you are qualified in that exam next year you can appear in the other one i hope i am clear if you have any question so far just type in the chat box question or maybe raise your virtual hand i will answer type in the chat box the question you have i will try to answer before i will move ahead any any questions if you have any doubt just type in the chat box vasundra trademark to be preferred first or put your question trademark to be preferred first or the patent ba llb bba llb graduate bb can give the pa as i understand you are right 
कैन लास्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट इन लॉ डिग्री या गुड क्वेश्चन प्रांजल सो लेट मी आंसर द फर्स्ट वन वसुंधरा क्वेश्चन ट्रेडमार्क टू बी प्रिफर्ड फर्स्ट और द पैटेंट इट डिपेंड्स वसुंधरा इफ यू हैव अ इंक्लिनेशन टू गो इन टू दैक्टिस साइड यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दैट विच डोमेन आई एम मोस्ट फैसिनेटेड अबाउट राइट इफ यू हैव इंटरेस्ट टूवर्ड्स इनोवेशन टूवर्ड्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग द न्यू इन्वेंशन यू शुड गो फॉर पैटेंट एजेंट एग्जाम but if you have interest towards brands towards their registration go for the trademark it's a very subjective and will depend upon your preference next question is can last year student in the law degree yes last or final last year or the final semester students are eligible to appear in the exam provided they will be able to show or submit their provisional degree within 2 months after the results so exam will happen in the month of january in the normal course of time the result will come by by uh, let's say april or maybe march end so if you are able to produce your provisional degree by by that time so you can appear the simple answer what about ayurvedic doctor again you have a technical qualification you can appear in both the exams trademark agent exam should we take first or patent agent exam again a one it's your it's a very subjective interest or question so depending upon your interest depending upon your qualification or your choice you can appear um, very subjective question so i cannot cannot say that you should appear in this one or that one i am bsc geology graduate and pursuing LL llb along with cs can so by having the bsc degree you are the science graduate so you are eligible to appear in both uh, ankita you can appear in the patent agent as well as trademark agent by your bsc qualification right but at a time my recommendation is that you should appear in one but i have the examples in the last year session we had two students who prepared for both and they cleared both the exams but generally for for uh, such such exams appearing in one is is always better sir i am bsc lawyer and you said to choose one so what i prefer afzal again very subjective these are two different laws two different practices but but patent practice uh, i will say is a bit more well paid as compared to trademark prosecution practice so you have to identify that what is my interest right you you understand that you have to first understand your technical interest and then you need to identify that which domain has more competition so i'll say patent domain has less competition as compared to trademark uh, domain because you will be able to find a lawyer or a agent who can file your trademark application for as low as 2000 rupee but finding a patent attorney who is able to draft a good patent application is not that much simple so drafting of a good patent application will cost you somewhere in the range of 20000 30000 40000 even patent attorneys charge up to 2 lakh of rupees for drafting a good patent application so you have to identify your interest plus the domain which has competition or which has less competition just to give more precise answer to your question a lot of questions i think let's move forward otherwise we are running short of time i will take questions at towards the end of the session but let's let's move on to the next part
i know it's a very tricky uh, point wherein if i will spend more than half an hour also i will not be able to answer all the questions but i try to answer if there are more doubts we can take during the q and a session so we were here we covered this part now let's understand and and this slide is particularly relevant to patents wherein i am trying to give you the very very broad perspective of what is the role of ip in r and d innovation and the process and culture around it a very technical slide i will say it's the my 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 10 years of journey is is captured in this one single slide if you are able to understand this slide you will be able to understand the r and d innovation and ipr processes for for the companies particularly so please visualize a, a house any any building is dependent upon four pillars it's a, it's a general concept that for a strong foundation you need to have four pillars a chair has a like four legs a building has four pillars a car has four wheels so to have a a base a solid base you need to have four pillars so for a ip innovation and r and d strong base you need to have these four pillars so let's understand which are these four pillars so pillar number 1 is the r and d and innovation every company which is in the tech domain or which is doing any sort of r and d or innovation or if you are an individual and you are involved in uh, r and d research innovation so as a result you are generating ip intellectual property that is the first pillar wherein people are doing the ip generation they are aware about the uh, this fact that they are generating ip or not that's a separate issue but all the people all the companies which are involved in r and d and innovation they are generating intellectual properties particularly patents by default so that is the first pillar let's let's move on to the second pillar once you have generated the ip and you have that awareness that if ip is generated and you are able to identify that this is the ip i, I have generated i have done some invention or i have uh, done uh, a coined a brand name or i have uh, invented a de design or it's a copyright if you are able to identify if you have awareness then you will be able to identify and the next step will be to protect that ip right so second pillar is ip protection here the role of patent agent and trademark agent is come into the play the role of patent and trademark agents are the the, the most important part is to help people in protecting their ip rights so they are the most important people for the second pillar they are relevant for others also they if they are able to protect they are able to identify and they can guide the ip generation part also they can refine define the ip generation part also but the main focus is towards the ip protection the third aspect is you have generated ip the first pillar then you move to the second pillar wherein you have protected your ip rights the third step would be to enforce your ip right if someone is infringing your ip right so you are taking action against that person and you are enforcing your ip right that is the third pillar the fourth the pillar is you are like like the commercializing your invention your your brand your design you are doing the licensing or assignments and and you are generating money out of your ip right so these are the four pillars in summary if i will like explain this slide in detail it will take one hour this slide only but just to give you a context these are the four pillars 
in any IP and innovation ecosystem. And I hope you are able to get some, some understanding about the role of patent agents, particularly in this slide. They can set the right R&D direction. I'll be coming on to that part that which types of jobs available. So if you are able to visualize this slide, you will be able to understand the role of patent agents and trademark agents in the upcoming slides. Right? Any questions in this slide? I'll wait, pause for a second. Just type in your questions in the chat box. I just want to see that if you are able to understand the concept or not. I hope I have not explained something very, very complicated. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. But I, I, I noticed a very good question and that is trademarks uh, has more clients or patents. Interesting question, Suraj. I will say both have the, the, like uh, it's not important that you know which has more clients better would be to understand who is generating more money so maybe a trademark agent or lawyer will be filing 100 applications in a day but maybe he is filing just for 1000 rupee so he might be generating 1 lakh rupee in a day or in a month whereas a patent attorney might be filing one single application in a month and he will be generating more than one lakh rupee by by one single filing so i think in general patent attorneys are better paid as compared to trademark agents or attorneys but again it's a very subjective there are attorneys who are charging for one uh, single appearance for trademark litigation matters and they are charging in lakhs again very subjective question but in general, patent attorneys generate more income. Generally, I'm again putting the disclaimer generally as compared to trademark attorneys. Right. I have an experience of one year in IP and in CGPDDM, but I need guidance to crack patent agent exam. Okay, Mohit, I'll be coming on to that part. Right. So let's quickly move on to the next part. And all the audience are here. Uh, its number is continuously increasing. So I think I'm able to convey the message which I am planning or which I have in the mind. So let's move on to the next slide. Right. So I have given you one distinction wherein you are able to visualize the overall patent industry or the patent domain. Now I want you to understand the broader perspective of the IP industry. So IP industry has different sort of verticals. The first domain is search. So if you are in the patents or if you are in the uh, trademark design or copyright, before filing any application, you have to do search. For example, if you want to file a patent application, you will not go directly just draft and file the application you have to understand the prior art. Like what is the information or what are the patents which have been filed prior to me or prior to that uh, applicant in that domain, which is similar or which are falling in the same or similar domain. All this or these activities are related to search. And there are different types of searches, patentability searches, invalidity searches, validity searches, FTO searches, landscape searches, wide space searches, too many searches. I can say that there are more than 10 types of patent searches. Then there are trademark search. If you are going to file a trademark application in India or maybe in any other country, you have to first do the search that if any same or similar mark is filed in that particular country or not. If you have got that registered, then you will go for watch related searches that I have a trademark registered. If someone is launching a product or services with similar brand name, or maybe most of the times it's the same brand name. So all these are search related activities. Then there will be drafting. 
you will not just simply uh, write your invention in a piece of paper and file it you have to draft it in a proper way before filing it at the patent and trademark office so the second part is drafting the third is filing so once the application is drafted maybe it's trademark patent or design you need to follow certain forms fonts and and a structure to file these applications before the patent and trademark office the third step is filing by the way today you will be meeting the people from all these domains who are working in the search side who are working uh, in the drafting side who are working in the filing side then fourth prosecution once the application is filed at patent office until the time it is live grant then you are paying the maintenance fee primarily so from filing till it is granted this in between or these two like the time frame or the activities which are done in between these two time frames from filing till grant or maybe the refusal this section is called as prosecution and prosecution for prosecution for filing for drafting what qualification you need to have i should not repeat that again you know the answer and the last is litigation so you have a granted patent you have a grant registered trademark you have a registered design you have a registered copyright and if someone is infringing any of these you can take that person to the court that gentleman you are infringing my ip right registered ip right you come and meet me in the court that step is called as litigation and what what this yellow arrow is indicating i need not to tell these are the patent and trademark agents this is the role of patent and trademark agents from drafting from filing from prosecution till prosecution all these are being handled by patent and trademark agents for doing the litigation you need to have additional qualification and that is to represent a client before the patent and trademark office you need to have patent and trademark agent qualification but to represent your clients before the courts you need to have law degree llb degree right and just look at the size why i didn't use the same size of boxes from search to litigation the logic is there will be 10000 pro uh, projects which will enter into search then it will be funnel will be narrowed down out of 10000 maybe 5000 will go for drafting then maybe out of 5000 maybe till filing 4000 then maybe towards uh, till the end of the prosecution further narrow and let's say you you out of uh, 5000 applications filed 1000 were registered so in the litigation maybe only 10 or maybe only 20 will go for litigation so this is the funnel search most of the jobs in the ip industry are in the search then drafting then filing then prosecution and then litigation so this is the funnel overall again it's very very broad very very high level but it will give you the clear perspective the next part very important slide but we are running short of time i have to quickly move i think i will have to take one more session and let me promise you very soon we are going to take a session wherein we will decode the job opportunities in the ip industry very soon you will be getting the invitation it's so vast that you you just look at the figures let's first look at the career options available in the ip domain first patent related services and practice what what services which are available related to patents one is searches i have already explained then illustrations illustrations means patent applications have drawings these are called as illustrations right so they are just uh, like they don't have any uh, technical qualification maybe you are just having a ba degree a bsc or maybe a bcom degree but if you are a good illustrator you can generate a lot of income by being a patent illustrator translator 
a simple translator cannot translate patent documents that person should have technical background then again i have red highlighted prosecution you need to have a patent agent qualification then litigation these are just the broad overview of the patent related services trademark services searches filing and prosecution again you need to have trademark agent qualification then litigation and remember the funnel litigation out of 10000 maybe 100 will go in the litigation then counterfeiting and piracy and investigation related uh, services others a lot of other services are available in the ip industry ip paralegal ip paralegal is a person who might be filing the applications on behalf of a patent agent or attorney at patent office he or she is the person who is doing the docketing maintaining the records maintaining managing the timelines right so so these these people are called as ip paralegal or administrator then ip researcher and policy matter expert i have been fortunately in all those uh, domains wherein i was with fikki i was doing the ip policy related work what policy government is framing and what are the concerns of the industry then ip valuation specialist then ip strategist and the most beautiful domain is copyright and design related services and practice again searches filing uh, and prosecution litigation counterfeiting and related things i hope you are getting some sense of the broadness of this ip industry let's quickly move on to the next part job opportunities that was the main main focus of this webinar job opportunities in the ip industry after clearing the patent and trademark let me decode this part in next 5 minutes first of all in the ip industry the the majority of the jobs are with the ip firms i have broadly used the term ip firm because there are different types of ip firms for example law firms which are primarily focusing on the prosecution side and litigation side then there are apos i will not name these firms but but i think if you will do a google you will understand which are the companies in each of these domains kpos which are primarily doing this or offering the search related the first part the broadest part these are kpos then there are consulting firms which are evaluating the first two they are doing the searching part but they are getting some insights from those searches and on the basis of uh, these insights they are advising their clients on certain business parameters consulting firms then very very core or litigation oriented firms or individual practitioners who are into litigation side then there are jobs a lot of jobs available in the corporate uh, side there are ip teams within the company in the pharma company you will go you will find a very very uh, good ip team which is managing the patent filing trademark filing the search part everything legal teams then r and d and product development you can get the jobs then in the companies there are and particularly in the pharma companies there are business development related roles project management office and portfolio development related jobs very lucrative job and if you have the ip background if you have the patent background you will be at the top of all these jobs if you will do a survey who is the top most person in any pharma company who is doing the portfolio development or bd that person and i know there are people in this seminar itself who are the vp in company pharma companies maybe if if uh, he is available and if he can give me uh, go ahead in the whatsapp i can invite that person to talk to you and give the job perspective right so so bd and pmo related jobs in the corporates then there are academia government and chamber jobs i have been in the chamber job for example you can get job in the ip cell of a university you can be in the incubation center you can be in the intellectual property facilitation centers patent and trademark examiners at patent and trademark office government jobs like nrdc and there are many byrac who are looking for 
patent experts. Then, then there are jobs in the chambers, for example, FICI, CII, SOCM, etc. The number is huge. The, the diversity is huge. I cannot cover everything. Then the most beautiful part is the freelance. If you are a patent agent, if you are a trademark agent, you need not to do any job, a full-time job. You can be a freelancer wherein you can draft the application and you can charge for that drafting working from home as low as 10,000 and as high as one lakh rupee for drafting one single application. For trademark filing, you just handle the trademark filings of your clients working from home, charging them a reasonable amount of money and generating a good salary without working in any company full time, working from home, you can generate a lot of revenue. So these are the job opportunities. This is just 10% I have covered. 90% I will cover in the next webinar wherein I will decode the job opportunities in the IP industry. So I'm done with why part now before coming or introducing the Academy of Patents. The second point was how to crack the patent and trademark agent exams. And for that, I will invite my colleague Akash. He will quickly walk you through Akash. I'll request you to please be brief and just quickly uh, run them through through uh, like the requirements or what they should do to clear the patent and trademark. Yes, definitely. Yes. By the way, Akash is a practicing trademark lawyer. In his daily practice, he files the trademark applications. He has filed and prosecuted thousands of applications. And most of these are registered at the patent office uh, and, and, and globally also. Not only filing the opposition and everything, the litigation part he is also handling. So I think no one other can best tell you about the trademark practice.